Clifford's the best friend anyone could know. He's the greatest dog ever. I really think so. Welcome back, folks. Fino here with a servant guide for Avenger of Shinjuku, or as I like to call him, Clifford the Big Blue Fucker. Also, if I sound a little bit strange, it's because I've, uh, I've been up for a while, so, you know, can't do much about that now, can I? Except sleep. Not an option. So Clifford is a 4-star Avenger with a Hybrid Arts Quick deck, and right off the bat, he's notable for being the only Avenger who isn't A. Limited, B. Storylocked, or C. Angra Mainyu. This means you have a chance to get him in the course of regular banner rolls. Uh, that said, I kinda suspect we've got more Jolters out there, just on the pure volume of quartz spent. Taking a look at Clifford's skills, let's start with Fallen Demon. It gives Clutch Defense and Star Absorption, which counteract his two biggest weaknesses, his fragility and his class's tendency to repel crit stars. The magnitude of both is fairly reasonable, but the duration leaves a lot to be desired. As a 3 turn buff, this would be amazing, but having it on just one is pretty rough. Skill 2 is Monstrous Strength. It's a 2 turn attack buff. Not bad, but not really notable in my opinion. Skill 3 is One Cloaked in Death. This purges an enemy's buffs in addition to applying one turn of reduced attack and death resistance. For a variety of reasons, instant death isn't a relevant mechanic for people besides Nidacris and Saber Shiki, but the purge and attack down are fairly nice. The latter combos with Fallen Demon to give you a relatively safe turn. As for the purge, it fits nicely with his all-out attacking playstyle, and pretty much guarantees he'll do something before getting zeroed out. Doggo's Noble Phantasm is... oh boy, here we go again. A Freerin Shafrikta. Single target quick NP, gives him sure hit. Pretty decent. You use it to lead combos and get sure hit for your brave chain. You know, Chloe strats. If there's a particular obstruction, clear it with one cloaked in death. Pretty simple once you factor out the superfluous instant death mechanic. Taking all this into account, I've cooked up a few teams for your consideration. First off, we have a template with a defensive character and a second attacker. Your support can be Mash or John. Both help with Clifford's fragility, and Mash in particular lets him tank through NPs with Fallen Demon. Now, if you run a team like this, Doggo's not getting any stars without Fallen Demon. So instead of wringing my hands about that, I decided to put in a second attacker. One who will get stars while paying it back. Clifford doesn't care a whole lot about class matchups, so you have quite a few options. Neurobride is a supportive attacker that can donate NP gain, attack, stargen, and defense. All things that Clifford wants. Other alternatives for this supportive style include Bedivere, Gaius, and Altera the Santa. For a more aggressive pick, consider Li Shu and Lancer. He's an arts crit attacker and he can use all the stars that Doggo generates but can't use. Saberlot works too. This ain't my favorite setup for one simple reason. You're playing around Clifford's weaknesses, not his strengths. Let's try to rectify that. As you might imagine, Scotty is the logical endpoint for any quick attacker. For Doggo in particular, she fits his extremely aggressive, short-term gameplay. With two Scotties and a limit broken K-scope, you can dump her buffs and debuffs, NP on turn 1, NP on turn 2, and if you play it right, NP on turn 3. For two of those, you have monstrous strength to back it up. If your target's still alive, you can sack your frontline to an enemy NP, and bring in reserve attackers to finish the job. Doggo has a tendency to flop around once his buffs expire, so your best option is to go all in on those first few turns. Thankfully, that's what Scotty's all about. Next up, we have an assassin based team. Shiki has instant death, but you won't run her for that. The bigger advantage is being able to rapidly burn down priority targets with NP combos, taking pressure off so you can build back up for the boss wave. Danzo is a lukewarm attacker, but she greatly increases Dago's survivability. Same deal with Kotaro. Now, if you rolled in this banner, there's a good chance you've got a few copies of Mr. Fister, and he's actually not a bad compliment. If there's one thing Clifford loves, it stars with no strings attached. Mr. Fister can gimp his own absorption, leaving Dago and your third member to fight over what's left. The idea in short is that you have enough stars to sate both Shiki and Clifford, mitigating his poor absorption while staying on the offensive. Donzo doesn't do it quite as well as Mr. Fister, but you get survivability in return. Alright, I'm going to talk about the instant death formula again. It's pretty much the same spiel that I gave in the first Asan guide, so skip to the next team if you've already seen that. Instant death in FGO is calculated by a special death rate formula. I'll throw it up on screen, and the short version is that a lot of the things you do affect that third section. The problem is that when you multiply something by a fraction, it tends to get really small. The second segment is determined entirely by a value that the enemy controls, their own death rate. Bronze enemies tend to be vulnerable, but mid-bosses and servants have comically low death rates. Here's an example. Let's say you want to kill Saber Alter. You might look at a wiki and see 19.2%, but that only applies to your Salter. Enemy servants operate under separate values, typically around 0.1%. 
I calculated a near optimal case for the factors you control. Limit Broken Hydra Dagger, Assassin Shiki's Bond CE, 500% overcharge on Clifford, one cloaked in death, and both Mystic Eyes. With all this taken into account, the odds of instant death are still less than 1%. The numbers against mid-boss enemies are better, but still miserable. Yeah, it's really bad. Sometimes you fight bulky bronze enemies, and these you can insta-kill with regularity. But by and large you shouldn't invest in gimmicky instant death teams. In most situations where it matters, Assassin Shiki and Castor Nidacris get the job done by themselves. Finally, we have my preferred non scotty setup. You may have noticed there's no graphic, and the reason for that is simple. I think tailoring teams to Clifford is a waste of time. If you look at his skills and stat line, it's clear to me that you shouldn't treat him as a charge to protect, but a resource to expend. Either you send him first as a suicide lead so he can chunk out the boss and die, or you run him as a finisher. One Cloaked in Death is perfect for this role. The attack down buys you some extra time, but the buff purge is where it gets good. This game has a bunch of enemies like Marie and the various coups that love to waste your damn time. And when they're alone, the odds of them casting Beautiful Princess or Battle Continuation skyrocket. By purging those buffs, you get a clean Brave Chain with your attack buff. For enemies like Ku, you have even more leeway since your NP comes with Sure Hit. This, I think, is the most successful way you guys can use Clifford. At least until Scotty comes out. Oh, one more thing. Quetzalcoatl shows up in my notes, but she doesn't fit neatly into any of my samples for this video. If you have an interest in her, consider pairing this Avenger in theory with our Avenger in fact. For craft essences, I recommend damage buffs that aren't bound to card type. Golden Sumo, Summer Little, Talk of the Hot Sands, Intumbra, Holy Night Supper, and Castle of the Sun are my picks. For finisher and suicide lead strategies, I'd recommend a Limit Broken Kaleidoscope if you have one. An immediate and unassisted NP is very nice for that approach. Clifford is very much a feast or famine sort of servant. Either he's ripping shit apart or he's a big furry paperweight. His class, hybrid deck, lack of crit amps, and short skill durations also blunt his offensive power, and push him towards the famine end of that scale. In other words, he's too balanced, which is a running theme with Epic of Remnant Servants. I'm not gonna recommend him, but if you have a copy, may as well incorporate him into your strategy. And that's all I got. If you enjoyed this video, by all means like, subscribe, and stop by my Twitch channel. I stream every weekend. It's mostly FGO, but also some weird shit. All I promise is a good time. See you there.